So I'm a CTO of a small company in Ukraine and we are called MindK. Uh, we have no designers, no search engine optimization people, we are just developers and we have uh, eight developers, one uh, HTML and CSS developer, one manager and me. So we are something like outsourcing uh, company and uh, most of our clients uh, are design agencies uh, uh, in different uh, countries uh, so they sell and we code so that's simple <laughs> uh, I'm also uh, part of Dioscori uh, design team and uh, I lead the development uh, of their Ember subscriptions uh, component if you know of Tienda e-commerce yeah, that's from uh, Dioscori design and uh, I'm also uh, often asked to be a technical reviewer of upcoming uh, Joomla books. You know, so when the author of the book uh, uh, writes each uh, its chapter, uh, I make sure that uh, everything is clear there from the technical uh, point of view. Yeah. So that's about me. Uh, what is this about? So, what are we going to talk about? This is about uh, creating high quality code and uh, no, not repeating yourself. Uh, I will show you approaches uh, uh, that you can use uh, to develop your extensions, Joomla extensions. And uh, we will be speaking about Joomla uh, components especially. Uh, now you can ask me why I think uh, it's important. Yeah, and uh, I think it's important because we uh, have more than 7,000 uh, extensions posted on JET. And what do you think? Uh, uh, how many of them are well developed? Yeah. Five percent. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, about 70% of them are just uh, spaghetti, yeah? just uh, spaghetti code. Yeah. So that's why I think it's important. Uh, from the other part, uh, part uh, it's also good to have a little framework, your, your little framework uh, that you will be using to develop uh, extensions because uh, Joomla is changing and uh, new versions uh, is being released, you know, that uh, they switch to short uh, uh, cycles of releasing, yeah, and uh, if you have some base classes, it would be really easy for you to migrate uh, your extensions uh, between uh, Joomla versions, yeah, so that's why it's important. So the agenda, we'll speak about what is the framework in general, uh, I will show you some tips, tips and tricks and some small approaches uh, uh, how to make your little framework inside uh, Joomla, so with uh, plain Joomla framework and uh, at the end uh, I will show you some ready-made solutions like Nuku framework you know, and uh, the system that we built for Dioscore design called CMS layer to manage all their extensions, I think uh, it's about 20 or more extensions, more? Yeah, okay, right now. So what is a framework? What do you think? What is a framework? Or what is a framework for you? No? <laughs> okay. Uh, for me, framework uh, is something uh, that uh, allows you to develop just business uh, logic of your application and uh, it will take care of everything else. Yep. So should the framework provide you with the general architecture? Yeah? Yeah, of course. Uh, what about security? Yeah. So database management, connections, yep. Okay. Some patterns, good patterns, modern, yep, MVC factory, yeah. Files and classes management, it means, I mean, auto loading, uh, yeah, ability to load files inside frameworks, and okay. Dispatching of the application, yep. Takes care of routine tasks for you, yeah. And allowing to override it, yeah, when you need a custom solution, yep. 
Okay, and uh, fulfill your three wishes. Uh, that's uh, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> For example, you may full fished web shop, test it, and beer. Yeah, and that would be great. <laughs> Okay, now let's see what Joomla framework offers. Yeah. So, since you see a lot of red lines there, that station is not good. That's only my opinion, but I think you will agree. <laughs> and uh, we will try to focus uh, on those scenes a little bit, and, and uh, I will show you uh, how I think they can be improved. So, we are not speaking about improving the Joomla itself, uh, we're speaking about uh, how you can create good code with Joomla uh, using the, uh, the current versions, yeah? And not saying that Joomla itself is bad, so that's why uh, I, just, I just use it, yeah? Yeah, so uh, you, uh, the general idea that you can create uh, good code with Joomla, yeah? Mm. And so let's see uh, for some good parts, yeah? In fact, Joomla uh, has not so bad uh, general architecture, and uh, the main point here is to use it. So when you need uh, some feature, uh, you can firstly uh, search uh, Joomla libraries folder for it, you know, investigate the classes, uh, decide to whether they can be used or whether you need uh, uh, something custom and extend uh, and only then uh, use uh, some third party uh, solutions because uh, I'm working with uh, uh, Joomla extensions uh, on a daily basis and uh, I see a lot of uh, you know uh, reinventing the wheels yeah there so uh, in Joomla you can find such classes and uh, developers uh, for some reason uh, create their own classes so the general point here is uh, uh, if you can use something that is inside framework just use it yeah. Okay, and one of the last topic of all of the developers is security yeah mm. Security um, uh, may, came, may come easy if you remember those four rules. Filter input, escape output. Yeah? And uh, Joomla uh, has a lot of good tools for this. You, all you need is just to use them. So we have JRequest. Yeah? Uh, if you use it uh, for getting the request data every time, it should be fine. So no uh, direct uh, accessing of uh, uh, global uh, variables like post, get, session, yeah? mm, and also in uh, J request uh, you can use uh, filtering by uh, type, yeah, which is very good. If you speak about database, it's about using uh, the database quote and uh, get escaped methods. So each uh, SQL statement, uh, yeah, I mean SQL statement inside PHP. Uh, uh, should uh, should be written with uh, uh, escaping, yeah? but uh, it doesn't work if you if you need to uh, to filter uh, by integer. Like if you want to select uh, one item uh, from a table, yeah, and you write uh, the where clause where ID is equal to something. Yeah? If you just uh, wrap it with uh, database code, it's still possible to uh, to hack your code. So when you know the type of uh, the variable, uh, just use that type. Yeah. Uh, either using uh, jrequest get int or explicitly uh, forcing to integer in uh, that uh, SQL statement. There are two uh, useful links here. You can uh, see there later. Yeah. Okay. If you speak about including and loading files in Joomla, uh, we have J loader class, uh, we have the wrapper uh, J import function, uh, and uh, also all good require ones. Yeah, but that is not good. You see uh, loading classes, you see uh, requiring classes uh, uh, throughout the whole framework and uh, throughout um, uh, your components as well. Yeah? That's not modern and uh, you, uh, you can do it uh, different, uh, differently. That's just a simple example of simple uh, autoload uh, class. So uh, w what you need is a system plugin, Joomla system plugin, which will register your uh, class yeah? and that class will make the autoloading. And, uh, 
I will show you that in action. So that's a simple plugin with one initialized function. All that it uh, is doing is just loading, using jloader, by the way, loading uh, your class. And if you see that loader class, I, I tried to make it uh, as easy as possible. Yeah. So it has initialize uh, method, which will simply register the auto loading function and target it to your load method. Yeah. And if, for example, your classes uh, start with my, yeah, so my component, my uh, something component, yeah. Uh, they will be loaded automatically. You don't need to uh, include them. Yep. So that, uh, that is just uh, a simple example and uh, you will save a lot of lines of code if you just use auto-loading instead of uh, loading uh, files uh, manually in your code. Yeah. So uh, Joomla doesn't provide this uh, functionality. You can do this uh, with jload, uh, but you can do it in your extensions and uh, keep uh, them clean. Yeah. Yep. Uh, now we speak a, a little bit about uh, component uh, dispatching. This is uh, an example of uh, from uh, Joomla Hello World tutorial version 1.5, and this is uh, the main components file. I, I think uh, everyone is familiar with it. And yeah. So all that uh, we see here that uh, uh, your component is uh, dispatched by the controller yeah? and uh, it is possible to have no controllers at all. So you can have one main controller and then uh, page controllers, I call them page controllers. But in fact, uh, you you can have no controllers, and if you see Joomla uh, core components like Com Web Links, they use just one main controller and uh, no page controller. So uh, every request uh, is uh, being dispatched by main controller uh, for all pages. So I don't think it's it's very good. If we uh, see Joomla 1.6 approach, they have uh, done some improvements to it. They have a master control and uh, here is the link uh, uh, without, uh, with um, more details. Uh, so every request uh, is uh, dispatched by main controller, so the, uh, there is no way to load your controller. Uh, instead of main controller and uh, main controller uh, or master controller will decide uh, what to do. Uh, they changed things uh, slightly, but it's uh, still uh, the same. Yep. You still need to write a lot of code uh, to dispatch your component. Yep. So let's create a simple dispatcher for your uh, components. Uh, we, uh, we will need a base dispatcher uh, because uh, the dispatching is uh, the same for every component and uh, there's no need to recreate it each time. Uh, we just need a base class. Uh, we will extend this uh, uh, class with uh, our instance and just call the dis uh, dispatch method. Yeah. So uh, what we get is just one line of code in, in your main uh, components file. My dispatcher dispatch and we just uh, define the, the parameters that we need. And uh, uh, that's all. Yep. And uh, I can also show you the dispatcher. So this is this is my component, the main uh, component file. Yep. Just one line of code. And this is uh, the abstract class. Uh, base uh, dispatch with the dispatch method. It uh, takes uh, the configuration parameters yeah? and uh, all the logic is done inside this base class. Yeah? Uh, one interesting uh, thing here is that uh, 
we use view uh, for dispatching, not the controller. Uh, why? Uh, why? I think it's better because uh, if you see the core Joomla components uh, in the administration panel, you will see that uh, Hello World uh, tutorial and uh, the dispatching is done by the controller. So they check if some particular component, uh, sorry, the controller is uh, re requested uh, and uh, lo loaded. Uh, here uh, we use view for dispatching. So we uh, uh, we say that uh, controller is equal to the view. Yeah. Mm, uh, one reason for this is that uh, when you create uh, menu items on the front end, uh, uh, I mean in the administration panel, uh, you choose from uh, the views and uh, uh, layouts, not the controllers. So uh, uh, all that you will have in in a link will be view and layout, not a controller. So uh, why uh, make uh, this so uh, difficult and make such differences in the administrator panel and uh, panel and uh, the front end? Yeah. We'll just uh, decide that uh, everything will be dispatched by the view. So if view uh, student, for example, is uh, requested, uh, that means that uh, we will need uh, a student controller. Yeah. So this is just a simple example uh, and uh, you can use it for your uh, components and extend it <coughs> as you need. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and now we're moving to interesting topics. MVC, model view controller. Uh, how many times uh, did you see this uh, diagram or similar? I think many, <laughs> uh, and uh, it it looks it looks simple, but uh, when it comes to uh, developing your code, no, always uh, some issues uh, uh, occur. Yeah. And that's so. That is also true. Uh, that uh, no framework will help you if you don't understand MVC. Yeah. So I will briefly tell you about the main uh, tasks of each part of MVC. So, uh, controller is the boss, he is the manager, and, and managers uh, don't do uh, routine tasks. Yeah? Uh, have you ever seen a uh, manager you know, uh, doing this? I don't think so. Yeah, so uh, <coughs> All that controller is doing is getting request data. This is the main task for every controller, to get request data. Yeah. So no database uh, uh, queries should be placed uh, in the controller and no rendering uh, like echo and the, and the code. Yeah. Model is a hard worker, so uh, because model works with data yeah, and it's takes a lot of code uh, to to make uh, that work properly. So that's why uh, your models uh, can be big. Yeah? And uh, as opposite, uh, controllers should be small. Uh, and there is a uh, uh, common approach uh, in, in the MVC that uh, you should keep your controllers thin and uh, you can make your models thick. Yeah? So uh, that is the most uh, uh, that is uh, the mistake that I see in almost in every component that in the model you are get uh, developers are getting request data yeah so are they are inside the model class they are getting uh, values from the request uh, uh, by using the request or direct accessing the uh, global variables. And if uh, if you figured out uh, the tasks for controller and model, uh, it's obvious that uh, view uh, should do only rendering templates, no less and no more, only rendering. Yeah. Uh, let's see wh what we have in Joomla. We have J controller, J model, and J view the base uh, classes. Yeah. And so, if you have base classes for uh, MVC, uh, let's create uh, a simple uh, f uh, list of data with a simple search filter. Yeah? 
uh, that's the task that uh, as a developers we do every day yep. and uh, let's uh, create it uh, with real MVC according to all those rules so uh, if we are going to do it uh, properly yeah, uh, we will have the request to be passed to the controller uh, a controller will update the model state yeah. mm, then uh, the controller will uh, will inject the model with the updated state to the view and then uh, it will call the view uh, display method yeah. and uh, view uh, itself will call model to get uh, those uh, data yep. but if we call model uh, with the, the state yeah, uh, we will uh, notice that there is no state uh, for the model mm, so we we updated the state in the controller then we called uh, parent display method as we usually do when developing uh, Joomla controllers yeah? but there is no state when we called uh, the same model from the view yeah? so and uh, what uh, uh, what many developers do uh, they just use uh, jrequest inside models because there is no way to get uh, data when you need to get uh, an id of or like in this example uh, to get uh, filtering yeah mm, there is no way uh, to get it except like calling uh, jrequest yeah. So, uh, what we m uh, may do, we may say that it's done like this in Joomla, so let's just use it and uh, we saw this uh, in many components, I mean using the request inside models, uh, but, but we can create a base class and uh, redefine the, uh, override the jcontroller gets model method. Yep. And uh, that's all. And uh, I can show you uh, how we can do this. So let's take some Joomla components in the admin panel, like web links. Yep. And find display methods. Oh, we don't need this, sorry, comma blinks. So this is the, the simple uh, function, yeah, and uh, uh, display method in J controller is used to render something, yep. If we are going to make it uh, a true MVC, uh, we need to call model here. No? We call model. like then we will update its state and say search and insert the request data like <coughs> do it and then we call parent display method yeah and to, if we investigate uh, the parent display method, uh, we may find that uh, it calls the same uh, get model. Yeah. So it should store our state. But when we call uh, the same uh, model from the view, yeah, like this get data, this is a shortcut for the model calling, we won't get uh, uh, this state here and uh, the reason for is that the gate model method uh, doesn't save uh, the model so it's uh, every time you call get model yeah, it creates a new instance so all we need to do is simple just create a private property and check it Oh, not null. Then just uh, return it. You can put this uh, updated get model method to your base class, and 
you will have uh, the model using set state and you, you won't need uh, to use J request inside uh, each model explicitly. Yeah. And uh, that is good for many reasons and uh, last year I uh, told about this uh, in details. Yeah. So well, this is uh, how to make small <coughs> achievements and place it to your base classes and to, uh, to get, uh, to get uh, good code. Yes? Uh, sorry, uh, could you please repeat? Yeah, yes, uh, you are do, doing this by overriding the get model of the J, J controller. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you, you, you're creating your extension and of course uh, it's more than one page you know? and uh, uh, the question is uh, how many models, controllers and views do you need to render and to manage one page. Yeah? Uh, I believe that if you're working with uh, the same database table uh, you need to use uh, the same MVC so, if it's a list from some table, you have a controller, model, a view, and if it's a, a, an editing page, a form to edit uh, this page, uh, it's also the same MVC. Because uh, it's all about data, and, and uh, uh, we are just rendering the data and uh, managing the data. Yeah. So, one database table, one MVC. So one controller, one model, one view. Yep. This is a typical page from the administration panel. This is actually an article manager. Yep. And uh, you, you saw it many times. But uh, when you uh, create your own extension, it comes to all those boring things. If you need uh, this page in your extension, page like this, you need to implement all those boring routing stuff like uh, toolbars, uh, I mean uh, uh, managing the actions of toolbars, uh, ordering, uh, filtering, uh, uh, pagination, and uh, you need to do it for each page, uh, uh, for each extension, and uh, you see those uh, 7,000, more than, so, uh, more than 7,000 of Joomla extensions are uh, doing the same. Yeah? So even inside uh, one component, uh, they uh, create uh, a code for each model, for each view, and put uh, the same uh, methods inside uh, that pages just uh, with uh, a name changed. Yeah? So you can send that boring task to your little framework yeah? and you can create base classes that will manage uh, those things. Yeah? So uh, because it's all, to, uh, it's all about uh, create, read and update. And it's the same uh, in the front end and uh, back end. Yeah? Uh, we always need to see something, to, to update uh, and uh, to delete it. Yeah? And uh, Furthermore, uh, it's, all ab it's all about lists and about forms, yeah? because everything in the web is lists and forms. Yeah? So you can create classes for validating your forms and you can use some base, uh, no, not base, some ready-made uh, validation system. There are a lot of them and you can integrate uh, the front-end and the back-end part yeah, into your base classes and use it uh, for, uh, for all your extensions. Yeah? The same theme, uh, thing uh, comes to the list and I will show you later what we did in MindK to render lists. Yep. Yep. Oh, actually, I can show you right now. <laughs> so, if we, if we speak about lists, uh, we developed a library to render lists as fast as lightning. So, we have MindK library in the libraries folder. And we have a thing called Greedist. Greedist is the tool that uh, will render 
any kind of list uh, for the back end and for the front end. No. All that you need is to define the fields, uh, database, and other options uh, in uh, XML files. Yeah. So let's see some component that we did. It's, it has a greedy folder, and for example, contact XML file. So we'll see a field, and we have uh, adapters for Joomla and Nuku already done, so this is a Joomla adapter. Uh, you, you just define filters, uh, ordering uh, default settings, uh, and then uh, add fields. Uh, XML is just a, an adapter, you can use uh, JSON, uh, PHP array. Yeah. Uh, we haven't done this yet, but uh, it's easily uh, to do because it's just an, ad an adapter. Yeah. So th this thing uh, renders and manages uh, all those boring stuff uh, for the listing. Yeah. And you can make the same thing for you <laughs> and uh, use it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you take all the boring tasks and create base classes, uh, you will come to less code, yeah. to write in less code. Okay, uh, I was telling about creating base classes, base uh, f framework, uh, so the question is where to store it, and uh, there, there are at least three places. Yeah? You can create a system plugin, and if you distribute your extension, uh, you can force uh, a user to install it uh, when installing your extension, so it will be automatically uh, installed uh, with your extension and uh, uh, for Joomla 1.5 I think this is uh, the best way of doing it. Uh, you can uh, put it to the libraries folder and that is actually the right place to place uh, to, to store it, uh, but uh, Joomla 1.5 doesn't have a library installer, yeah? but you, if you develop for 1.6, they did it. Yeah? And uh, of course, if you uh, want to make just one component, yeah, you can place those base classes uh, inside a uh, component folder, for example, in, in its administrator part. Yeah. Yep, and uh, finally, finally, uh, you can, and you, you need to benefit from <laughs> PHP uh, 5 version. So, well, uh, regardless of what uh, of that Joomla was built for PHP 4, yeah, uh, there are a lot of good things in PHP uh, version 5, and uh, like magic methods, uh, interfaces, exceptions, yeah, and it's really a high time to use them. So. Okay, so uh, I showed you some uh, simple tips, some simple tricks, yeah, uh, and uh, of course I uh, uh, can't show you the whole framework because uh, it will take a lot of time for me to explain. Yeah, but uh, it's just an approach. Yeah, and uh, when you uh, when you develop it, uh, when you develop your extension, uh, you need to think. Yeah. Uh, what and where can be refactored, yeah. and uh, it uh, doesn't came from the first line of code. Yeah. You need to, uh, a lot of con, uh, code uh, to be uh, done, yeah. uh, when, and then you uh, can uh, come back and see what parts can be refactored. So uh, when I uh, develop an uh, extension, yeah, uh, I'm not thinking about uh, putting everything to the base uh, framework, to the base uh, class uh, from the first line of code. Yeah? Uh, I develop it and uh, I see uh, later uh, where and what can be improved. So uh, when people ask uh, uh, how to make frameworks and uh, when it's time, I usually uh, answer, uh, you will feel it. Yeah? Uh, you will feel it uh, when you when you need uh, those uh, small framework uh, to manage uh, your components. Yeah. 
but uh, I showed you uh, just little snippets of code, yeah. Uh, and uh, the main reason for this is that uh, there are uh, good tools and there are good times in Joomla. Uh, we have such things like Nuku Framework, and uh, I know that uh, Molaju team uh, uh, did some great improvements to the MVC part and, and uh, uh, a few days ago I saw the base classes, yeah, uh, base controller, model and view classes and uh, they are almost empty which means that uh, all the boring tasks are done by the framework, by the, uh, the Malajo framework. Yeah. And if we speak about Nuku framework, uh, regardless of what uh, uh, regardless of uh, when they go going to use it or not, uh, you should see it. At least you should see uh, the Nuku framework. <laughs> uh, because uh, all that uh, I was telling you before uh, is uh, already done uh, in Nuku framework. Yeah? <coughs> and uh, it takes some time to uh, investigate it, uh, but uh, if you start with these small things like K-load, K-factor, mixins and HMVC, uh, that would be great. Uh, they don't have enough uh, documentation because they believe that their code uh, is so uh, clean and uh, so that you can investigate just code. Yeah? Uh, that is true and that is false at the same time, yeah? but uh, that is how it's uh, for now. But, uh, I'm not affiliated with Nuka Framework and uh, I don't work for them. Uh, I just uh, use it and uh, I see uh, that they did uh, some really uh, great work, yeah. And if you speak about mix scenes, do you know what is it? No. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, mix scene is the uh, the approach to bring the multiple. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, multiple class inheritance to those programming languages they uh, don't have it. And as you know, in PHP you can extend yeah, only from one class. Yeah. And just a simple example. Uh, you have three pages in the administrator panel. Uh, so we will have uh, three MVC. Yeah. Uh, three models, uh, three uh, yes, three models, two controllers, and uh, three views, yeah? and uh, we need to uh, handle the file uploading uh, on two pages, but not uh, on the third one. Yeah, and uh, uh, I face this uh, situation uh, uh, every day. Yeah, so uh, what we can do? Uh, we can create uh, uh, those base class uh, for the controller. Yeah. And place like uh, me uh, methods like uh, uploading file uploading there, yeah. But we don't need uh, that method in the sort uh, controller, yeah. So it would be really uh, great if we uh, create a separate class for file handling, yeah, and then extend uh, uh, those two pages uh, that. Needed, yeah. But we we can do we can do it in plain PHP uh, because uh, we we also need to extend from J controller and some base classes, yeah. Yeah. So uh, using a mix scene, uh, you can mix methods uh, on the fly to your uh, class, yeah. And uh, this is what many developers do with helpers, yeah. Uh, I see many extensions uh, that use. Uh, helpers, yeah? not uh, template helpers, but uh, helpers for s uh, for doing such small things. Yeah? So inside models, inside uh, controllers, they call uh, those small helpers for doing some functionality. Yeah? Uh, but you can do it with mixed scenes. Yeah? Uh, I won't uh, d d dig into the theory too much and uh, to the implementation uh, because you can see the implementation in Nuku framework, for example. Yeah, and what is H M V C? Do you know H M V C? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, when the page is loading, uh, how many controllers are executed? One. Yeah. Uh, 
but what about uh, the situations like we have a list of students uh, and that uh, that is surrendered by the component and on the uh, back side we need to display for example the latest news uh, five latest news so th this is data from another component uh, and uh, in Joomla this is done by modulus yeah? uh, but in in a modular you need to create some code to get this data and uh, if you see each Joomla modular uh, you will find uh, SQL statements there yeah so uh, their uh, uh, their modular developers explicitly uh, trigger the database for getting this data yeah uh, one step uh, up for this is to use models because if you have uh, for example com student component for engine list we also can com uh, have com news components and so the model uh, for this uh, con for this component com use is already done so you can just call this model and call its get list uh, or whatever method and and to not uh, you, uh, trigger the database uh, execution yeah, of your uh, SQL statement but uh, uh, one step uh, up from, uh, from uh, the model approach is to use an HMVC when you use an HMVC uh, two or more controllers uh, are executed Mm, at the same time mm. so uh, what you do in uh, your module you just call the controller and it's display or uh, whatever method you uh, developed and that's all you have uh, com students uh, which renders uh, the list of students and uh, that is the page that was requested and on the back side on the right side for example uh, you have a, a call to the com news controller yeah, which will render uh, the list of items so uh, you don't create a new code for modulus yeah. and, and that uh, can be done with HMVC uh, and uh, I also won't dig in, into the theory uh, in details you can read it in, uh, in the internet and uh, investigate a NUCO framework uh, so whether you are going to use some ready-made solution like Nuku framework for your extensions or you think it's too hard to complicate it and too huge for you uh, you can at least investigate it yeah, to get uh, uh, those good approaches and good ways of uh, doing things yep. okay. another example is the CMS layer and uh, today I will uh, present you uh, it's for the first time it's uh, it's not public yet yeah so uh, as I told you in the beginning I also work for Dioscori design company and they have more than 20 extensions yeah and we have that uh, boring tasks in all components yeah so uh, we came to the idea to create uh, code base maybe not framework but more a code base for all Dioscori extensions yeah. and uh, it should handle uh, two main things uh, is the interface yeah. uh, because uh, Dioscore clients uh, requested uh, their components to be loaded on WordPress, Drupal or other systems so we decided to make uh, an interface layer yeah. so we don't need to change our code the code is uh, developed one time yeah? mm, uh, and uh, it can be used uh, uh, in any system of course in theory <laughs> in many system uh, but at least in WordPress, uh, Drupal or Joomla so you have a CMS base system you have a, a CMS layer interface and then uh, you will have uh, each implementation of the interface and uh, that's that's done by uh, PHP 5 uh, interfaces uh, functionality yep. and uh, another part of it is the uh, code base because uh, as, I, as I told you the score has a lot of extensions and a lot of code and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, functionality like for example in 
Ambro subscriptions, the component that uh, allows you to, uh, to create uh, subscriptions on your website. Uh, we have uh, payments uh, pl uh, uh, plugins for PayPal, Google Checkout, and so on. Uh, the same plugins uh, we need for Tienda, e commerce solution. So we thought that it would be great uh, to have uh, uh, those uh, integrations inside a CMS layer uh, and uh, then just to use them. And so it's not about uh, a framework uh, like a tool that will help you to, uh, to create a code. It's about uh, a code that is ready, like for example you need uh, a very custom uh, configuration page uh, on the admin panel. Yeah, so uh, you need a separate table for it in the database, not the Joomla default table, uh, with steps uh, and with uh, uh, you know everything you want. And uh, we have a base uh, configuration system. Yeah, so you can just trigger it from the uh, framework, from the CMS layer, and get it. So if you use CMS layer. You can take your product to WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal. So it's still Joomla code, yeah, uh, but uh, we made it look good. Yeah. Uh, so that's and I actually can show you some examples of CMS layer. It's it's not released yet. Yeah. We're still uh, working on it, and uh, after we come to some stable version, it will be released as open source product. So uh, you could try it. Uh, so uh, it's package. So it's a system pl uh, plugin, yeah? and uh, it uh, has two folders: base folder for for base classes and Joomla and Joomla implementation. Yeah. So. If you see, for example, uh, the loader, we have base loader, TMS loader, and the adapter base class and interface. Yeah? And that's all for the base part. And then we have the same folder uh, in uh, the Joomla implementation, which only has uh, a connection to Joomla. So. In Joomla, we have uh, components, so that's why we are implementing the CMS loader adapter interface and create integration for Joomla. Yeah. So, and uh, I think we've done some progress uh, for Joomla 1.5, and then we start doing uh, an instance for 1.6, and then for uh, WordPress and uh, Drupal. Yep. Mm -hmm. Another uh, cool thing uh, about uh, CMS layer is that it uh, allows you to overwrite Joomla uh, component classes. Like, for example, if you don't like com user controller, yeah, but uh, it's just a small thing and you don't want to install a different extension yeah, from JET uh, to manage uh, your users, and to, uh, it's a custom project, it's not a it's not that extension that you, you will uh, distribute, it's just for that one client. Yeah? Uh, it's really easy to uh, uh, just to hack it, yeah? uh, to, uh, to insert your code inside, yeah? but uh, you can do it better. And, uh, and if you know the Joomla framework and this uh, loader functionality, uh, you can find it from there. That's, you can easily so you can easily uh, overwrite uh, Joomla uh, classes. Uh, let me find it. It's in the overwrite. No. But so we have Daniel here. <laughs> ah, yeah. Uh, he's also working. No, it's not in Joomla. Yeah. So we have a Joomla override. It's just a class. Yeah? Uh, it's not that interesting how it works. <laughs> yeah? But uh, if you use a CMS layer, mm, and since it's a system plugin, we have on after road trigger. Uh, so when your application is dispatched, 
we call CMS override uh, class. And if we have a folder called components and then the folder called com user and uh, controllers, for example, register PHP, yeah, uh, that file will be loaded from this folder, not from the Joomla component. And when you update your Joomla, uh, you will just uh, do it simply because we don't hack the core classes. Yeah. Now, this is another small scene uh, that can be used with Joomla and, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, Regardless of what Joomla is good or bad from the programming perspective, you can still create a good code for Joomla. So there are no excuses uh, when uh, making Joomla extensions yeah, that uh, Joomla is not so good itself, so that's why uh, we just use it. Yeah. You, can, you can do it and uh, even not uh, with hacks, yeah, uh, just to override, to create some hooks. Yeah. So, that's all for now. Write good code and be happy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>